Overjet. The overjet is evaluated by articulating the models and viewing the labial-lingual relationship of the maxillary arch relative to the mandibular arch. In order to determine the proper relationship of the casts, the examiner must rely on the trimming of the backs of the bases of the models. The models are set flat on their backs in order to determine their assessment. If the models are mounted on an articulator, then the articulating mounting shall determine the proper maxillary mandibular model relationship. If the proper overjet has been established, then the buccal cusps of the mandibular molars and premolars will contact in the center of the occlusal surfaces buccolingually of the maxillary premolars and molars. In the anterior region, the mandibular canines and incisors will contact the lingual surfaces of the maxillary canines and incisors. If this relationship exists, no points are scored. If the mandibular buccal cusps deviate one millimeter or less from the center of the opposing tooth, one point is scored for that tooth. If the position of the mandibular buccal cusps deviate more than one millimeter from the center of the opposing tooth. Two points are scored for that tooth. No more than two points are scored for any tooth. In the anterior region, if the mandibular canines or incisors are not contacting lingual surfaces of the maxillary canines and incisors, and the distance is one millimeter or less, then one point is scored for each maxillary tooth. If the discrepancy is greater than one millimeter, then two points are scored for each maxillary tooth. Note that although overjet is typically scored by assessing contact between opposing teeth, this score is subject to examiner modification. For example, cases in which incisors display extremely acute interincisal angles and or significant overlap of incisal edges may be scored an additional point. So here are our casts and uh, they are included. I'm going to pick them up after I've made the certain they are included uh, on their backs. And uh, we begin, I begin usually with the anterior teeth. And the edges of the mandibular teeth should contact the lingual surfaces of the maxillary teeth. I will usually first visualize, evaluate to see if they appear in contact. I oftentimes will use the half millimeter thickness of the, of the uh, measurement gauge. If it won't go through, then I don't score. If it does go through, then I turn the gauge 90 degrees and see if they will go through uh, at a one millimeter width. If it won't go through, then one point would be scored. Or if it goes through, of course, two points would be scored. Now in this particular case, um, all the teeth contact and there is no score. One thing to consider is the morphology of the lingual surfaces of the maxillary incisors. Uh, sometimes you will have fairly large marginal ridges on the lingual surface. And of course, those, con those will be the ones that we want to contact. We won't matter about the, the center of the tooth in that uh, particular case. Now, if we move to the left posterior teeth, the important factor is that the mandibular buccal cusps should be in the central groove, in essence, of the maxillary posterior teeth. It's very difficult to measure uh, directly because you basically can't place the measurement instrument of the gauge in that location. In this particular case, it looks good. When you examine the right side, I think it becomes immediately obvious that the overjet of the right first molar is not correct. If I look at the central groove, compared to where the, the uh, mandibular buccal cusp tips are, it's uh, about one millimeter or less. So I'm going to give it this overjet one millimeter on that one tooth, or one point, and so there would be one point for the overjet parameter. Now let's move to the right side uh, of the CR eval form. 
At the top of the column, it will be occlusal contacts parameter. Occlusal contacts. This section of the evaluation determines the adequacy of occlusal contact of the premolars and molars. The buccal cusps of the mandibular premolars and molars and the lingual cusps of the maxillary molars and premolars should be contacting the occlusal surfaces of the opposing teeth. Each mandibular premolar has one functional cusp. Each mandibular molar has two functional buccal cusps. The maxillary premolars have one functional lingual cusp. However, the maxillary molars may have only a mesiolingual functional cusp. If the distal lingual cusp is short or diminutive, it should not be considered in the evaluation. If this cusp is prominent but does not contact the opposing arch, then points may be scored. If the cusps are in contact with the opposing arch, no points are scored. Do not score diminutive distal-lingual cusps of the maxillary first and second molars, nor lingual cusps of the mandibular first premolars. If a cusp is out of contact with the opposing arch, and the distance is one millimeter or less, then one point is scored for that tooth. If the cusp is out of contact and the distance is greater than one millimeter, then two points are scored for that tooth. No more than two points are scored for each tooth. Now that last phrase in the original instructions about no more than two points per cusp has been clarified by the board. No more than two cusps per tooth may be scored. Also, a diminutive cusp on any tooth is not scored. Now with occlusal contacts, keeping the casts occluded, uh, you have to really pick up the occluded casts and examine the, uh, you know, the right and the left side uh, from the facial. Uh, the first ha uh, half of the measure is for the contacts of the mandibular facial cusps with the occlusal uh, surfaces of the maxillary teeth. To measure, I, as I said, visualize, and I'll place the millimeter, the half millimeter side between the contacts if I can. It looks like uh, I don't, uh, everything's contacting on the left side. So let's look to the right side. Again, I will uh, place the half millimeter and when we get to the second molar, looks like there is a gap or a space there. And um, in between here, okay, go from different, different angles. Uh, and if I, if I can get in there with a half millimeter reading, sometimes I will turn it sideways to the millimeter to see if that will go in there. In this case, it won't go in there. So it's no longer, um, no longer, I mean, it'll be only half a millimeter, won't be a millimeter. So the score then will be one point for just the half a millimeter opening. Uh, now we turn to the, uh, keeping the, class, uh, the cast secluded, we turn to the lingual and we're going to do the same thing there. Uh, we're measuring the contact of the um, maxillary supporting cusps with the mandibular teeth. And uh, I will again use, uh, use my half millimeter tool to see if there's any opening there. I'll turn to the other side do likewise between the, the teeth. And by the way, you don't score those second, uh, or the, excuse me, first premolars because of, again of the diminutive cusp, the morphology of those teeth. So everything seems to look good from the lingual aspect. I hope you can see that. That's kind of difficult to, to visualize. So when we score the occlusal contacts, we really we only scored that one right uh, looking from the facial, the lower buccal cusps, and that's one point. And so the total uh, score for the occlusal contacts uh, is, is one. Now the next parameter that we'll uh, examine will be the occlusal relationships. Occlusal relationship. 
This section of the evaluation determines whether the occlusion has been finished in the angle class 1 relationship. Ideally, the maxillary canine cusp tip should align within one millimeter of the embrasure or contact between the mandibular canine and adjacent premolar. The buccal cusps of the maxillary premolars should align with or be within one millimeter of the embrasures or contacts between the mandibular premolars and first molar. The mesial buccal cusps of the maxillary molars should align with or be within one millimeter of the buccal grooves of the mandibular molars. If the maxillary buccal cusps deviate one and two millimeters from the aforementioned positions, then one point shall be scored for that maxillary tooth. If the buccal cusps of the maxillary premolars or molars deviate more than two millimeters from ideal position, then two points shall be scored for each maxillary tooth that deviates. So no more than two points shall be scored for each maxillary tooth. In some situations, the posterior occlusion may be finished in either an angle class two or class three relationship depending upon the type of tooth extraction in the maxillary or mandibular arches. In a class II situation, the buccal cusps of the maxillary first molar should align with the embrasure or interproximal contact between the mandibular second premolar and first molar. The buccal cusp of the maxillary second molar should align with the embrasure or interproximal contact between the mandibular first and second molar. If the final occlusion is finished in a class three relationship, that's when mandibular premolars are extracted, the buccal cusp of the maxillary second premolar should align with the buccal groove of the mandibular first molar. The remaining occlusion distal to the maxillary second premolar and mandibular first molar are adjusted accordingly. Now, the casts remain occluded on their backs. Looking at the right side, I will use the millimeter ruler in to measure from the interproximal or embrasure area of the lower canine and first premolar to the canine cusp tip. And in this case, it is two millimeters approximately, so that would score one. So I'm going to place that on the uh, cast radiographic evaluation score sheet. Looking at the first premolar, it's less than a millimeter, yet the second premolar, if we look at that, unfortunately it's the one that, was, if you remember, was rotated earlier, and uh, it measures uh, 2.5 millimeters. So this will score a 2. If we look at the first molar, millimeter or less, second molar, likewise. So let's turn to the left side. Upper canine to lower embrasure, uh, less than a millimeter off. Same thing, premolar, second, first premolar, second premolar, first molar, second molar. So the left side looks pretty good. Um, sometimes the occlusal tips uh, of teeth all along here may be worn. And I think one uh, thing that will help sometimes, again, is to draw a line on the uh, facial contour of the maxillary surface. And I may use the side of the pencil lead and run down the surface. That creates a line uh, where you think the cusp tip should have been and you can uh, measure to that. So I think that sometimes is helpful. So the total score for the occlusal relationship parameter is 2 plus 1 is 3. Now the last cast measurement is the interproximal contact parameter. 